morning. Good morning. It is the birthday of our country. It is a wonderful, special holiday for those of us who live and work and have our being here at the beach. And so we will start this morning with some very special music. The words will be up on the screen. I invite you to join me and sing it from your heart.
Please be seated. Good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome. How wonderful to see all of you to gather together and to wrap this holiday weekend up in prayer. How special is that? We are blessed to be together in this space, but we also want to keep in mind brothers and sisters who worship with us this morning through our website and our DVD ministry. A few very brief announcements. It is the first Sunday of the month, and so fair trade items are for sale in Fellowship Hall. Please stop in after our worship service. We use the money collected for the sale of fair trade items to do social justice mission in this area, in our community, so desperately needed. And so it's important that we support the ministry. They also have some amazing things for sale. And speaking of social justice and missions, I would like to introduce to you, if you have not already met, Bill Quinn, who has a few words to say. Good morning. First off, I have to do an apology to Pat. Oh. I kind of, well, I didn't realize when I called for Spam Sunday that Pat was going to put on a pig hat. So I apologize. And I want to thank you all. Almost 50 cans of Spam came in from just this group. That's an amazing thing. That's the good part. I want to share some numbers with you. We've been crunching some numbers to see where we are with the food pantry and what's going on. Last year, throughout the entire year, we served 600 people through our food pantry. That's an astounding number. However, at this same time last year, we served 275. Right now, we're over 400. The need is huge. It is an amazing work of Epworth that we do this. You know, one of my favorite songs is from the Music Man. He says, oh, we got trouble right here in River City. No, here we have hunger in Rehoboth Beach. Every person that comes through our pantry, our pantry is a little different than any place else in this town. They're allowed to choose. When they go into other pantries, they're given a bag. What happens with that bag is sometimes it's waste. We don't want to waste the food. It's a very precious thing. So we allow them to choose the foods they're going to use. They're allowed to take two bags of groceries from the pantry at an average cost of about $18 a bag. It's a big number. It's a big need. So why I'm here, I'm here to ask for your help. If you're like me, nobody goes to one grocery store and gets everything they need because not one store in this town has everything. We're in and out of them all week. So if you would remember when you walk in the grocery store, add that extra can of Spam, that can of tomato-based product. Out back on the back, <laughs> yes, Pat, more Spam. Um, <laughs> on the back altar out in the Narthex, I've put a few things out there to just kind of remind you. Pick them up when you're in the grocery store, throw them in the cart. Our carts are always out in the hall. Let us continue this work. It's a very expensive project and we just need your canned goods and toilet paper and little tissues and all the things that you reach for. If you're in the dollar store, when I go to shop for the pantry, I'm in the dollar store all the time. Mm. A tube of Colgate toothpaste is not $3 like it's in Giant. It's a buck in the dollar store. Mm. It all helps. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for the work that you're doing to maintain this such an important ministry of the church. Do we have anybody with us for the first time? Anybody who never worshipped at Epworth before? Hands, hands. Let me see your hands. Yay! Over here. Yay! You are a blessing to us. We are blessed by your presence. We consider you part of our church family just by having you here. Please make sure you keep your hand up so that the usher can give you a thank you gift. Brothers and sisters, please stand, greet one another in the love and the peace of Christ.
as you can see this morning, we are here to celebrate because, as you will later learn, Jesus was a beach boy. And so we're going to have some fun with that this morning. Can you give me an E? There's your page. Praise his name, praise, praise his name. Praise his name, praise, praise oh, his name. Oh, praise his name. So glad he came. You're going to catch it, and you're going to tell me what you like about the summer. Ready? Go. <laughs> what is it you like? Playing soccer. Playing soccer. Hanging around my family. The beach. Susie. <laughs> Definitely the beach. Definitely the beach. <laughs> OK. D, go. <laughs> what do you like about the summer? The beach? The whole thing? The whole thing. Scooters. Scooters. She likes scooters. What do you like about the summer? Oh, the pool, swimmer girl. Keith? My birthday. All right. <laughs> Put it up to her right behind you. There you go. Yes, please. Candy and ice cream, hello, hello. Hiya. Swimming, all good. Ready, Chase? Ready? Boop. <laughs> Playing at the pool, oh my gosh, all so good. So there's a lot of amazing things we do in the summer, right, that are really, Surfing. really, really fun. What? Surfing. Surfing. <laughs> okay, Chris, come on. <laughs> 
And skimboarding, which I still to this day have never figured out, which is a physical impossibility, I'm sorry. <laughs> Crazy. All these wonderful things we do with the summer, but who sometimes do we forget about in the summertime? I know sometimes people just forget to do what? To say thank you to God. Because we live, we live in a most amazing area, don't we? We can go to, we can walk to the beach, we all get up and we can just start walking, we'd be at the beach in just a few minutes and people come from everywhere to be with us. So I want us to pray today and say thank you to God for the gift that we have to be here and to live here and to celebrate the summer together, all right? Shall we pray? All right, dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful area where we live. Thank you for the beach. Thank you for the pool. Thank you for surfing and swimming and all time with family. All the good things that happen in the summer. Let us never forget to say thank you to you. Amen. Amen. All right, dear hearts, have fun. Please stand. Let's sing. We are blessed to be in this area, but no matter what our surroundings, there is no better place to be than in his presence.
Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. In our daily lives, we all need to find that special place or time to be close to God. For me, it's every morning at 5.30, in the pool, swimming laps as the sun rises. For 1,500 yards and 30 minutes, everything else is washed away. There is no traffic on Route 1. There's not a long line of people outside my office, and there are not hundreds of emails and phone messages to return. For 30 minutes, as my arms slice through the water, I see only his beauty. And for the remainder of my day, as things go crazy, as they always do, I can go back to that wonderful moment and once again feel the peace of his presence. My brothers and sisters, where is your special place? When is that special time each day in your life when you connect with God? In addition to the joys and concerns that are in your bulletin this morning, our thoughts and prayers are with Mark Miller, Mike and Holly Reynolds, and all their family on the death of Debbie Miller, Mark's mother. We have concerns for Ken Pyle, Bonnie Messick, who's the cousin of Marion Ward, and we lift up this morning Penny McLennan and the entire mission team as they are in Thailand this week. We also have concerns for Gwen Chappelle. And now, let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, on this July Sunday, we lift up the passengers, crew, and first responders of Flight 214 in San Francisco. May we always be reminded of the amazing courage and bravery they showed as they helped each other in a time of crisis. We pray for the recovery of those injured and pray that you will be with the families who have lost loved ones. On this July Sunday, when we celebrate our country's independence, we also lift up the people of Egypt and pray that peace will be restored to their country. May they learn from our country's journey to independence that freedom and democracy take hard work, patience, understanding, and leadership. May you be with them in this time of transition. This morning, we lift up to you those with cares and concerns that we just mentioned, especially the Miller and Reynolds families on the passing of Debbie Miller. Indeed, this morning, Lord, she is home today with you. May you guide them and keep them in the days to come during their period of grief. We also lift up those we now name silently in our hearts. Dear Lord, our scripture this morning reminds us that we each need to come away to a quiet place. It is in that quiet place that we will find you. Make us always mindful that better is one day in your house than thousands elsewhere. May we each find you in the place your glory dwells. Let us all draw near to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. Please stand as you are able for a reading of the Gospels of Mark and John. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. 
For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried on there by foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the, his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. This is the word of God for the people of God. A few years ago, a bunch of us clergy women from the Maryland area rented a van and decided we would drive to New York City and catch a show. We left early in the morning thinking we would beat the traffic and then we'd have some time to shop before the play started. But you know, New York is New York. And so we get to New York and traffic is at a standstill. My friend Joan was driving at the time and she can be quite the confrontational one. So she's laying on the horn and trying to get things moving. Finally, she realizes nothing's gonna help. So she gets out of the van Anna, you know, is making a ruckus. And some cabbie yells over, hey, what's with you? I thought Virginia was for lovers. And he's referring to the tag on our rental car, which said Virginia. She said, oh, no, we just rented the van. We're from Maryland, and Maryland is for crabs. <laughs> Maryland is for crabs. And even though I live in Delaware now, I am still a Maryland girl. It's funny, when I think about going home, there's still a part of me that wants to go to that side of the bridge. But I'm a crab girl. I grew up on crabs. Uh, I remember, Reho I mean, I came to Rehoboth every summer, and we would go crabbing. And back in the day, you could actually catch them easily. I remember going down to Love Creek at night and walking out on one of those catwalks, and you could just scoop them up with a long, a long pole net. Just scoop them up, put them in your basket. I've been raised on crabs. Well, I got to think about crabs and beach memories this week because it's summertime, folks. We've, we've passed the July 4th landmark. It is time to enjoy your summer. And we're here at the beach. I mean, this is where we live and work, and many of you are visiting with us, but this is... This is what I love about being a part of Maryland and Delaware. It's the crabs, it's the fresh fish. My daughter is here. She all, Hannah, where are you? She always complains. She goes to school in Ohio. She's like, Mom, they do not know how to do fish in Ohio. <laughs> they do not know how to do crab cakes in Ohio. That's the first thing she wants when she comes home. But I love summertime makes us think of fish, crabs, the sound the seagulls make when they fly overhead, the view of the ocean, and of course, coming to the beach. In the summer, all of us want to come to the beach. I can say that this morning because you're here, right? Well, now that I live here, it's a matter of finding time to go to the beach. But I'm working on that. And some of you are here this weekend with us because you're vacationing or because you spend all summer here or because you scoot down every, every weekend. But all of us are here because we love the beach. And we love 
Epworth loves that you want to share worship with us. What better place to worship than at the beach? Well, being in the heart of summer reminds me of beach days, but I also think of the beach, especially when I hear the words from the gospel lesson, where Jesus says to the disciples, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Did you know that was in the Bible? Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Well, two weeks ago, my family went on vacation, and I felt a bit guilty because I'd only been here like two and a half months. But I have to tell you, we had to do it then because that's the only week my son could give us. He's doing an internship this summer at Drexel. I'm telling you, once they go to college, your life becomes whenever they're available. But so we went on vacation, and the dilemma was, now that we live at the beach, where do we go? How do we get away? Sorry. How do we get away? So we spent three days in the mountains in West Virginia. Wonderful, absolutely, totally deserted and wonderful place to relax. But we had to have some beach, so we came back for the last two days here at Rehoboth, from the mountains to the shores. There's just something about the ocean and the sand and the waves and the sun. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Well, beach days are made for doing what Jesus said to do. This is what I think you need. A bag of books from the library or you load up your Kindle. Sunscreen, towels, toys if you've got children or grandchildren who are going to be there, an umbrella, and those low sand chairs, and some snacks in the cooler and drinks. That's it. That's the essence of what you need at the beach. Spending the time relaxing, resting, spirit, body, mind. Now, over all my years, I've tried substitutions for the beach. I've tried going, you know, the mountains, the plains, trips to Disney, trips to other states, trips abroad. We even went one summer with the kids in an RV out west. Tried it all. But nothing beats days at the beach with a book and a breeze to rest and relax. Nothing beats, I don't think, a nap under the umbrella in the afternoon. Even those of you who live and work here I'm sure you'd agree. After all, that's why you moved here, right? Nothing beats the beach, a day at the beach. Well, I never really thought about Jesus being a beach boy until a few years ago. Something about reading these opening lines from the gospel lesson in the thick of July had got me to thinking, you know, he spent a lot of time at the beach. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. I mean, that's, that's, that's the line from the gospel lesson. Sounds like an ad to a travel agency. Come away to a wonderful place. And then I began to think about all those times that Jesus talked about and showed that rest was important. He was forever trying to get away from the people, you know, up on the mountain and, and across the water he'd go to get away. Of course, the people followed him. They wanted healing. They wanted to tell their stories. They wanted to meet him. But Jesus kept on trying to seek out rest and renewal. He was modeling for us. I guess he knew it was important to take a break, to rest and renew the soul. And then I thought about all the times Jesus went to the beach, to the shores of the Galilee. He taught from the boats, to tell stories. He told stories in parables. He calmed the stormy seas. He fished. He walked up and down the shores, the beach. He spent a lot of time at the beach. The second part of the lesson that, that um, David read today describes a scene we'd all love if we love to fish. I don't love to fish, but I'm sure there's plenty here who do. We're in the boat. The catch is lousy. We're about to head home, and we look toward shore, and there's our friend Jesus. And he says, try again on the other side of the boat. And this time, we throw the nets on the other side, and we pull up a huge catch of fish. And by the time we get to the shore, he's already lit the fire, started the grill. We're going to have fish for breakfast. Not a bad way to start a day. 
Evidently, Jesus was a beach boy. Most often at the Sea of Galilee, a lake 13 miles long and 8 miles wide, full of fresh and clear water and evidently full of lots of fish. And now that I've been to the Holy Land, John and I actually got to go in 2012. My Old Testament professor from seminary led the trip. Talk about, oh, my dream come true. But now that I've been there, I can actually picture in my mind what the Sea of Galilee is like. It's not some little dinky lake. It's a huge body of water. And on our first day in in Israel, we went to a church, and then we were heading back to the hotel, and this storm was coming in over the Sea of Galilee, and those waves were going like this. And our, our tour guide from Israel said, aren't you glad I changed the boat ride from today to tomorrow? That's what it was like. That's what it's like. And the Sea of Galilee provides a backdrop for much of what Jesus does in the Gospels. Evidently, Jesus was a beach boy. So by now you're thinking, well, what's all this got to do with me, Reverend Vicki? What's this got to do with us in the middle of summer? Well, I say everything. Especially if you begin to hear the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples that day as words that he's speaking to us now. Come away to a place where you can rest a while. That's the message for us today. Whether we live in Rehoboth or whether we're here just for the week or whether we come for the weekend or whether we just make it a day trip. These words are for us. Come away to a place where you can rest for a while. Do you know that there are times when some of us have a hard time taking vacation, getting away, resting? I'm not talking about a lack of funds for vacation. That is a problem sometimes. I'm talking about, you know, there are times when we work so hard at our jobs that we think, well, I I can't get away now. Or we say things like, well, if I go on vacation, the whole thing is going to blow up. They can't survive without me. Or we say, well, if I go away, then I've got so much to do. When I get back, it's not even worth it. Or I've never taken a vacation. Why should I start now? Julie, where are you? (laughs) Or we say, well, I can go away, but I won't relax. I'm going to take my iPad, my phone, my laptop, my Internet connection. That's not really a vacation. Hannah waited on a, on a group of people at Grotto's the other night, and she said both parents were on their phones and both kids were on their iPads. Is that a vacation? But Jesus says, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Ever since God created the earth and set aside that last day for rest, we have been told to do it. It's in the Ten Commandments, folks. Honor the Sabbath. Rest. To set aside our crazy, hectic lives for one day each week and take a break. Now, you know as well as I do that we're not very good at the whole Sabbath thing. Honoring the Sabbath, we don't do that very well. So what if we just started with vacation? What if we... What if we um, could make up for some of those working Sabbaths by taking one or two weeks every year when we simply rested as God asks us to do. Among the clergy, we actually call our day off our Sabbath because on Sundays, this is where we are. So I take Friday off, that's my Sabbath. Pat takes Thursday off, that's her Sabbath. What if we thought about it that way? Jesus worked on the Sabbath. He plucked grains and he healed people, but he got, he got in trouble for it. But when he was tired, Jesus knew that he needed to go somewhere for rest and renewal. And so he'd go to the beach. He'd get in a boat. He'd head to the hills to rest and renew his soul. Jesus knew there was something to this commandment to rest. 
Jesus knew what God knows, that we actually need it. We physically need to, to rest our bodies, to rest our minds and hearts and souls. I mean, we've got medical evidence these days that shows when you live in a constant state like this, a constant state of stress and tension, that the inside of your bodies actually are damaged. And sometimes I think it goes back to our history as a nation. I mean, think about it. We're, we're built on people who worked hard. The Protestant work ethic, you got your work done. I was raised that way. Vicki, you get your stuff done, and then you can have fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we then equate the value of a person with the work that they do. Or, if you work really hard, then you must be a good person. And sometimes then we begin to think if we're not working, then somehow we're slacking. And so vacation becomes a time to feel guilty. And that's not a vacation. But Jesus calls us today to be beach boys and beach girls, to put aside what society says and listen to what God commands. Listen to what our bodies need, what our soul longs for. Come away. Come away to this place and rest a while. Now, there's one more thing I hear in this scripture. And, th and that's about finding God, no matter where we are. You know, summers are made for the unusual activities. We kind of set the rules aside in the summer, right? The kids don't go to school, the grandkids are off, you want them to visit, you know. You plan a trip, you schedule the family reunion, you, you plan a garden. And at church here, we, we try to have less, fewer meetings, and then we have vacation Bible school, and we have church camp, and we may plan a picnic. And so, Sometimes we spend less time in this building, but that doesn't mean we're worshiping God less. At my old church, it would be funny. I'd go to the, the grocery store or the mall, and I'd see church members I hadn't seen in a month, and they'd look so guilty. <laughs> and they'd go, oh, Reverend Vicki, we're really sorry we haven't been in church, but, you know, we've been to the beach, or we've been to the pool, or we've been, you know, I'm like, it's okay. God still loves you, and so do I, and I bet God was in all of those places that you went. A good preacher once said, in everything we do, we must be finding God and serving God. Christians don't take time off from being Christians any more than our hearts can take time off from beating. On a sticky July day, we are as fully immersed in God's time as we are when we're singing Silent Night on Christmas Eve or proclaiming Christ is risen on Easter morning. We find God's time in all our time. In the Buddhist tradition, there is an expression, chop wood, carry water, which is a way of saying that spiritual meaning can be found in the smallest, most ordinary functions of the day, like sitting on the beach, my friends. God can be found sitting on the beach, like watching the waves come in and go out, come in and go out. In the call of the seagull, God can be found. In the sunrise over the ocean, in the sunset over the bay, God's there too. In the salty breeze, in a good book, in a comfortable beach chair, God is there. In all of it, hoping against hope that we will find rest and renewal for our souls sometime this summer. Friends, there is something about the beach, some essence of God that lives in the ocean. I believe that. With the power of the sea and the eternity of the waves and the infinity of the graves and sand, you can't tell me Jesus doesn't live at the beach. There is something there that takes us straight to the heart of God and the words of our Lord, come away to this place and rest a while. Amen. So take a moment, if you will. You're part of the crowd.
sitting on the beach. Peter picks up his guitar. We're just going to have a little bit of fun, some more. Would you stand? Notice that the lyrics were by Doug Yetter. He, uh, he did a great job with that. Well, welcome to Epworth. We invite you to take the blue connection pads that you find at the end of the pew and sign in and pass them down. And if you're visiting with us, we'd love it if you'd also put your address, phone number, and email just so we can say thank you for coming. The blue connection pads are also a place to um, share pastoral concerns with Reverend Pat and myself. You know, it's a, it's a great time to be at the beach and to be in worship and to share the love of God with everyone we meet. And so we're grateful today for all the blessings that we have and for this country where we live and for the opportunity to, um, to be together and praise God. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we thank you this morning for the beauty of this day, for the beauty of the beach, and for the beauty of the friends that we share this worship with this morning. There is great need in our world and in our community and in our church. And so we pray that, oh God, you might help us to give ourselves in response to that need that you might help us to share compassion and care, that you might help us to share wisdom and service, that you might help us to tell our stories of what you have done for us with others. And help us to give of our possessions and our gifts as well, O oh God, that all the need in our world and in our community and in our church might be met. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, your Spirit anointed him, to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and to death. And you made with us a new covenant of water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread. And giving you thanks and praise, he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given up for you. Whenever you do this, you remember me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast all together at the heavenly banquet. For it is through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in your holy church that all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever.
invite those who will assist with communion to please come forward as we sing the prayer our Savior taught. Brothers and sisters, the table of the Lord is ready, and you are invited to come. You need nothing more than the desire in your heart to be one with Jesus and one with brothers and sisters in Christ. Lend a hand boxes are on the end of these side aisles. The monies that are collected there used for brothers and sisters in our neighborhood so desperately in need of your help. The gluten-free elements are behind Rose and Reverend Vicki. If you need them, please come to that line. Otherwise, come at the direction of the ushers. The table is ready.
say thank you um, to all of the musicians who helped do a little bit something different today and our our steel drum people where'd they go are they in the back oh there thank you and just everyone who helped get us in the spirit for summertime and beach time and worship time with God because that's really what it's all about friends we can have fun as we worship. We can be serious as we worship. And God loves all of it. Amen. 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Go in peace and in rest. Amen. Praise his name. Praise, praise his name. Praise, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name, praise, praise, oh, praise his name.